Hey there, and welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, brought to you by Cadence Independent Media. We are here in the studio today to talk about concert toms, single-headed toms, and talk about what they're for, what maybe they aren't so great for, and uh, just kind of like why people even did that in the first place. Um, a lot of the drums that people had had bottom heads on them, and they took them off. Like, why would you do that? Let's find out. Okay, so first of all, why do they call them concert toms? Well, as I understand it, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was in orchestra in college, we used single-headed toms for instances where there needed to be toms. And the reason, as it was explained to me, was that they wanted to have a pure note and they wanted to have it be short because you're in a very boomy room that's designed for strings and horns and things like that to blend together. And you want the toms to carry through without making a big full sound just clarity articulation and gone and then you'd have a big array of sizes so you could choose the right ones that would be in the pitch range that you needed and sometimes we would tune them to a pitch and sometimes you would just leave them but more importantly there's only one membrane and that means that you don't have two pitches interacting to generate the sound you're hearing you just have one and you can tune it and then you're done and later on for rock music in the 70s and e even in the 80s uh, you see a lot of toms like this. Phil Collins is probably the one that jumps mostly to mind. Um, there's lots of footage of Nigel Olsen playing one-sided toms. And they would actually put the microphones up inside of the drum underneath to mic them. And that would give a really clear transient of the tom and also offer some uh, isolation for that microphone because you've got the shell around it rather than over the top where other things can bleed into it. And that short kind of articulate sound really meshes well with recording big rock drums in a big room because there's not a lot of low and frequency washing around. You just have a clear sound and then it's gone. Then when the advent of more muffled heads and more sophisticated bearing edges and rims mounts and things like that came along, people got it more back into the fundamental note of the drums with two heads and the sort of big blooming sound. So it's all sort of just like aesthetics for certain generations and certain time frames and what was sort of in vogue at the time. You don't see a lot of people playing concert toms these days uh, outside of maybe like film scoring or classical music, but I do know that Billy Martin of Modesky Martin and Wood and many other amazing ensembles uh, is a big proponent of one-sided toms and I'm not sure if he got that inspiration from Milford Graves, but I know that Milford Graves is also very intense about one-sided drums. In fact, on his kit, which is toms, snare, two bass drums. There's no bottom heads or resonant heads of any kind on anything, including a snare drum. So there's no snare wires on his snare drum. It's just top heads. And the sort of purity of note that comes from that and the articulation and stuff gives it a more sort of tribal element. Um, if you think about a djembe or you think about a conga, a lot of sort of folkloric drums like that, they only have one head. They're designed to resonate and throw tone a little bit more than if you take the bottom head off of a rack tom. But that sort of intrinsic single sound is what they're after, and so that's what we're gonna look at today. So we're gonna use my two Precision Drum Company toms here. We have an eight inch deep and 12 inch diameter rack tom, and we have a 14 by 14 floor. Now, we chose to put the rack on a rims mount because most modern drums have some kind of suspension mount and we want this to sort of speak to the sound that you'll likely get out of your drum. I normally use this drum on a snare stand and it is also drilled for a mount that goes directly onto the shell. And uh, these both have die cast hoops on top and bottom and we have a coated G1 on the bottoms of both and UV1s on the top. So these are coated 10 mil heads, top and bottom, both drums. And I try to tune them for a fair amount of resonance. They're not super high because I want to really illustrate what goes away when you take that bottom head off. So we'll play these a little bit, kind of get an idea of what they're gonna do, and then we'll kind of take them apart.
So they sound pretty boomy and they sound pretty resonant. They have some sustain, particularly the rack tom. The floor tom doesn't have a ton of sustain because it's tuned down pretty low, um, but it is basically just a simple medium low tuning on both of these. And we're gonna find that when we take the bottom heads off, they're really gonna change a lot, um, particularly this one since it has the suspension mount on it. Okay, we took the bottom heads off, uh, as you can see, and the main takeaway here is we didn't change the tuning at all. And <laughs> the pitch of the drums is really different now just from taking those heads off without messing with the tops at all. So because we've lost the resonant side head, there isn't anything to promote the note of this top head. You can kind of think of the bottom as the other ping pong player in a game of ping pong. And right now, this guy's just hitting it off the end of the table. Now there's nobody hitting it back. So there's no reason for this head to keep resonating. Since these are tuned down as double headed drums, uh, I think that if we can change the tuning on these a little bit, they'll get us into something a little more usable than this. They sound cool, but they also definitely sound like there's not a whole lot of activity going on, especially at lower or dynamic levels. And at the same time, I think that we could we could go lower for an effect. I think higher will be better. We'll we'll try lower first and just see what happens. But already we can see that it's almost entirely attack, almost no sustain and they're louder than they were before. The attack is definitely a lot louder, um, which I think for some people probably also has something to do with why they would choose to do this, that immediacy of the attack without any bloom from the drum. Uh, it gives you a different kind of sound. So first we'll go down a little bit. I'll just do like a quarter turn and, and even the pitches out and see what that gets us. I actually like this more than I thought I was going to. Um, they are getting down into something that almost doesn't even sound like toms to me. So those sound crazy and super uh, Phil Collinsy to me. <laughs> um, and it, it is worth noting that uh, when you're using this kind of tom sound, whether it's pitched down like this or pitched up, uh, you would definitely want close mics, um, unless it's an orchestral situation, of course, where you're dealing with the resonance in the room. Um, but if you're doing this for like a drum set scenario, I would definitely close mic them because there is a fair amount of tone right by the head. And again, for today, we're just using the 414 by my head, so you're hearing what I'm hearing. But uh, if I was going to use this in a recording scenario, I would absolutely make sure to, at least in case we needed them, put a 57 or, you know, something similar on them. And stay with us to the end because we're going to have a little surprise after everything's over with here. Now, the opposite. Let's go higher. I went down a quarter turn, so I'll go up a half turn from here and see where we end up then. Okay, so we went up a half turn, uh, slightly more on the floor tom, just because of uh, evening out the lugs and stuff, but basically a half turn up. And these really sound like timbales now. Uh, timbales are basically single-headed metal toms, um, the fixed depth. Uh, most of the ones I've seen are between 12 and 14 inches in diameter, and they come in pairs uh, like this. And you tend to crank those things up because they're about projection and rim shots and that sort of like punchy sound. And these are definitely doing that thing even though they're wooden drums. So uh, I'll just kind of play on them a little bit and maybe play some Timbali-esque stuff just to kind of show you how that's working.
This tuning doesn't work great on a floor tom because of the depth of the shell. Um, I've, I feel like, I mean, I've, I've fussed with it a little bit and I think that there's something to be said for the shallower drums for that timbali kind of sound because I feel like this is promoting the overtones a little bit more than the fundamental compared to this drum. But also you have to take into account that floor toms are on legs so there is a sort of gravity issue if you're going to only have one head. And the usable tuning range of a floor tom this way is going to be smaller than a rack tom and certainly smaller than a rack tom on a rims mount. I mean this has almost no sustain too but there is more fundamental and less overtone uh, compared to this drum. And I don't really think that changing the heads is going to affect that part of it that much because that's more intrinsic to a 14 by 14 drum sitting on legs trying to resonate when there's no help from a bottom head. Um, and having said that, I, I think the tuning on the 12 is kind of cool and if I was going to use these two sounds on a gig as sort of like an interesting effect, I don't think I'd go high, this high with the floor tom. Um, it's possible that I might also choose uh, clear heads for this kind of thing. Um, it is standard in my experience with timbales to use uncoated heads. Not necessarily clear, but definitely not with coating like a, like a snare head might have or, or like these have. Um, and apart from that, yeah, it's just a, it's an interesting sound and it's super duper loud. Uh, the projection is crazy. It actually is like, it's startling to hit them in a sort of a normal smaller room like this. It's important to mention that in a live situation, this is gonna carry much further than that lower tuning um, just by virtue of the tension. I don't know that a lot of tone is necessarily gonna carry further because again, there's nothing promoting that tone. But if you're trying to get this sound to travel, uh, higher is definitely going to be your best bet, both because of the stick projection and also because as I was doing there, you can play rim shots on the toms, kind of timbali style, which definitely throws it much further. So basically the bottom line is if you want to experiment with less tone and more projection, this is a real quick way to check out what your drums will do. And what you lose in tone, you definitely make up for in articulation and also in just some kind of like interesting behaviors in the heads because you've only got the one head acting on itself. And you can get a pitch out of the head at a certain tension that will not be the same as if you had that other head impacting from below. So, you know, going further down, going further up, it makes them feel totally different. It makes them behave totally different. And it might be a cool thing, you know, for an experimental situation or if you just want to kind of get your Afro-Cuban thing on. Okay, so after all that, here's what we've done. We added a little bit of compression and EQ to the little pass from earlier with the low tuning. So you can hear what it might sound like if you were doing something like this in an actual recording context. And if this is helpful, if you like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, let us know if you have any experience with uh, rigging your drums up this way, because this is definitely not something that I do very often, and it's been really interesting.